So this piss-soaked lot lizard goes sprinting into the travel center, and about five seconds later people started pouring out the front doors like the place was on fire. <laughs> Truck drivers of Reddit, what is your most NSFW story from the road? Years ago there was a similar question on here, and this truck driver got on and proceeded to tell a tale of him witnessing one truck driver's pet chimp kick the crap out of another truck driver's pit bull. I saw a lot lizard empty her contents by hanging her ass out of a truck window, then move along to the next truck. Lot lizards are mainly truck stop whores and prostitutes. A few times I've seen someone receiving road head, and once I had a convertible of college-age girls flash me their tits. But the funniest was a guy driving down the road with his topless girlfriend or wife. He was just holding a boob. He wasn't rubbing it, and they weren't doing anything else. He was just driving down the road holding a massive titty. My dad's a truck driver called me really upset one morning about seven years ago saying a girl my age, I was 16 then, was knocking on his window about 5.10 am, barefoot and obviously high. She had little to no teeth and didn't seem to have bathed in weeks. She was begging my dad to let her perform sexual services on him in exchange for like $10 US or something. It made him so upset that he bought her a hot chocolate and a sandwich, gave her his blanket from his truck and $50, and really hoped she wouldn't use it for drugs. I guess he thought of me when he saw her, I don't know. Really shook him. Driving northbound in Utah heading to Brigham to deliver a load. Get past Ogden, and it just starts down pouring like a Texas storm. It also happens to be 8 p.m. and pitch black out. Happened to roll by the scene of an accident where a gentleman was hanging out the driver's side window of a 90s Tacoma with a white sheet barely covering him and covered in blood. His head was only half attached to his body. The tires of the truck were bald as crap, and given the pole that the truck was wrapped around, it's obvious what happened. Wear your seatbelt people and be safe. I don't want to see another semi-decapitation. My old World of Warcraft guild had a truck driver in our ranks. He carried a full PC in his truck and connected over wireless at truck stops to raid. We were raiding the day the verdict was released at the last Michael Jackson trial. As we played, he was giving us regular updates of some truckers fighting outside his truck over the verdict. The fight kept escalating, stuff thrown, fists used, knives pulled. Finally he just piped up in voice chat, oh crap, gotta go, fill you in later and went offline. About 30 minutes later he comes back. Apparently the fighting truckers decided to pull guns on each other, so he decided to GTFO and head inside the stop. My dad's been a truck driver for over 30 years, and his story he tells all the time is before the age of cell phones. He was running in the middle of the night and came up on a flipped vehicle. About that time a state trooper pulled up. The trooper and him followed bloody footprints through the desert trying to find the driver. They never found anyone. Another time it was a similar situation, but it was an extended van with a group of people and children. He had to help find the bodies in the dark that had been scattered from the van flipping. My friend's dad was apparently driving one day, and a turkey fell out of a tree and broke through the window, and he was just covered in blood. He was apparently less than a mile from completing the delivery. Apparently they thought he killed someone before they saw the turkey. Used to assist in liability claims for trucking companies. What nightmare. Best NSFW stories involved the multiple times truckers ended up in the back of their trucks trying to score with a lovely lady. Who then proceeded to rob them blind and or steal the cab. We had two calls in one month involving truckers in Texas, where the drivers were found naked in the back of their trucks with no wallets or ID at all. Police were calling us to identify them and figure out how to get them back on the road. One guy lost a full load from Circuit City because he thought it was his lucky day. Didn't matter how many times we warned the drivers or told the stories. Another one was a guy who stopped off at home en route to deliver a load. Found his wife with her boyfriend getting cozy. He walked back to the truck, put it in gear and parked it in their living room. No one died, but try to explain to your insurance carrier how this was an accident. Pulled into a truck stop outside of Sacramento. Real dive. I just wanted some coffee and to take a crap. 
As I'm walking through the lot I see some sketchy looking homeless guy yelling at truckers demanding money. I decided to avoid the situation, cut between some trucks and circle around the store. About a minute or two later I hear a gunshot. The homeless guy shot a trucker in the head. Two other guys tackled him and held him for the police. I always wonder if I hadn't decided to avoid him if that would have been me. Edit to everyone asking, I didn't see the name of the truck stop. It was south of SAC on 99. This happened in the mid-90s. It wasn't a big chain truck stop like Pilot, Petro, or Flying J. I am one of the elusive female long-haul drivers. The number of times I have been invited to share a shower with total strangers is disturbing. But the absolute worst I ever heard was in a truck stop in Florida. I got out to fuel and had been running hard, so I had a bandana on and my hair in pigtails. I finished fueling and jumped in to pull forward to go get my receipt and turned on my truck. Overheard two guys talking about how they were going to grab me by my pigtails and ram me hard from behind. I opted to not stay at that truck stop that night and went to another one for my shower, laundry and for the night. Not necessarily NSFW but still pretty gruesome. My dad started driving in the 70s and has always had great and hilarious stories to tell, but never been much of a serious talker. No matter what I was going through, he hated hearing about any sort of emotion. One night I had confessed to my mom it was pretty tough getting through to him, that he seemed immune to serious conversation. She proceeded to tell me this story, hoping it'd clear some things up. These two kids had gotten into a wreck somewhere on the highway. One friend pulled the other out of the car and put him on the road while going to get help. As the one friend was going to get help, the kid on the road got hit a second time by a different vehicle, but the kid was still alive. So while my dad was driving he saw this kid, just lying there in the middle of the road dad pulled over, got out and held him until he stopped breathing. Mom said it really messed him up for a long time and that he never really got over it. I always looked at my dad a bit differently after hearing that, he was only about 21 years old when that had happened to him, and I think it had a major impact on him. Edit. Some of the best and worst things that ever happened in my dad's life were while he was on the road, but he's still driving to this day as a means of providing. There's always been something about being on the road, it's like being the needle that grinds grooves of a record. All you great truckers out there, keep on trucking. Driving northbound I-15 through Cajun Pass, I saw a really nice classic Buick parked on the side of the freeway with its hazards on, looked to have broke down. Upon closer inspection, an older woman had stopped, dropped her pants, hit the hazards, and was dropping a massive deuce with her ass hanging out of the driver window. Different story, at the Flying J in Ehrenberg, I stopped for fuel and jerky. While I was walking in, I noticed a driver yelling at a recreational reptile to leave him alone and let him sleep, and this was the last time he was gonna tell her. So I did my shopping, and on my way back to start fueling, I noticed the driver from earlier taking off from his spot and driving towards the lot lizard. I was thinking duck and grade I'm about to witness a murder and have to deal with taking statements and crap. Nope. Dude got his truck up to about 15 miles per hour rolled the window down and whipped a jug of something I'm gonna guess wasn't lemonade at her, and drilled her center mass. So this piss-soaked lot lizard goes sprinting into the travel center, and about five seconds later people started pouring out the front doors like the place was on fire. By the time I was done fueling the cops had come and were tossing her in their cruiser while taking turns dry heaving. Best part is I was about 50 yards upwind of all this. My dad is a truck driver, UK and European, and has been all my life. I used to go away with him during school holidays. I've spent a lot of my childhood in and around trucks and truck drivers, and I've pissed in lots of water bottles. When I was around 7 I went along during a run down through France. To pass the time we were playing games such as go through the alphabet, and you have to think of a boy's name with that letter and other games like go through the alphabet, and you have to think of a girl's name with that letter. The next thing I know we're in a small French town and stuck in a one-way system, unable to proceed due to the ever-narrowing road ahead. Dad stopped. He told people to move. He started to reverse. Then there was a bang. Dad got out of the truck. A crowd formed. I sat on the bed and ate sweets. Then the gendarmerie came. 
while reversing my dad had accidentally gone through the front of a salon. I remember the policeman motioning my dad to pull forward and my dad motioning and saying something offensive in trucker English, then I heard another crash. I'm sure a camera crew turned up at this point. When we pulled forward the brick and glass, being held up by the trailer, all fell down and landed on top of the gendarme's motorbike. Then we had to follow the police to a car park and get in their car. I remember they were armed and because my dad's a trucker, read. Arsehole, he told me not to worry because if I cried then they would shoot us. I cried a lot. For hours. And apparently that's why they let us go with just a fine. I also got a huge pack of stickers and all the sweets they could find. Like and subscribe for more funny, interesting, and scary r slash ask reddit videos.